What's going on? Move the Mouse here back in City Skylines, the town of Santa Palma, with another episode of the How To series. And in today's episode, we're going to hit the next milestone at 7,500, and that's going to unlock a ton of fun stuff for our city. Most importantly, high density zoning, and that's where we can really start to expand things into a bigger and bigger city. Uh, but, but we got a little bit of growing to do in the meantime, so I'm going to get some of this connected. We've got mostly, or I should say the most demand that we have is residential right now. So, I'm going to connect a couple streets through here, just so we can have a little bit of extra zoning. We'll do that all in uh, low-density residential for now, since we haven't unlocked the high-density variant. And why don't we go with the paintbrush and just do it that way. That works, although I would totally come back in and... Uh, and undo these right there, those two little ones. So that'll give us a little bit of people moving into the city. Let's see what our water situation is like. It's pretty covered. But where we're really going to start bringing in the, the higher density is kind of around this main drag. And maybe we could go down this way, kind of along here, and do a couple different things. So let, let's expand this road while we wait. Let's go three times speed also because... We don't want to wait too long here. Now, if you remember from a previous video, that does change the behavior of the lane arrows across the street. Also, when you add four lane road intersections, it creates traffic lights. So keep that in mind. Once in a while, they're not bad, but generally what you can do is you can come over to the inspector tool, select that, hold Y or triangle on consoles and go to the intersections tool. And then you can interact with an intersection, turn off the light and maybe stop just the side traffic. Let the traffic that's on the main road continue on and, and stop the smaller street that's basically the, the T junction. Um, now, what do we do up here? Do we add... We added a couple extra side streets. I think we need to do that. Because that just affects service coverage in a negative way. Do one like that. Move a couple people out. That's okay. What I want to do over here is I'm going to do a freeform road and get this connected in somewhere down here. And then let's do a couple more streets through here. So we can get some more people moved in. Go back into my zoning and we still have residential demand. It's pretty much going to get eaten up right here. But that should be enough to get us to 7,500. I can't imagine it wouldn't be. Now, while that's happening, let's get maybe... We'll do all this, the main street in high density. And then maybe we could have another area that kind of goes along the coast that is high density. Let's see how far we can bring this out. Again, I tend to snap to the 5 or 10s, and you'll notice the at 5, that, that line appears. And if you click on it right there, build the road to there, that's 10. It makes it so there's more even space between the nodes, and that's where the AI calculates lane changes. So right now, the, the thing we got to watch out for is we're still bringing in all the traffic for our city into this one intersection and roundabout. So this will be one of our uh, projects coming up very soon, but... We're just going to get 150 people moved in right now, or actually a little less. But I don't want to overzone if I don't have to, especially on industry, because we're about to no longer need the uh, the polluting industry over here. We'll be able to do it with, uh, with office space very soon. Or I should say meet that same demand. So let me let this play for a minute. Let's see if we can get to 7,500 without changing anything else, and then we can start to talk about higher density zoning and um, what goes along with that. And there we go, big town milestone. Now, if you're building on another map, these numbers for population may be different, but you unlock the same things. So we've unlocked a new area. We can expand our town. 
If you've got the Campus DLC, we've unlocked that also. If you've got Green Cities, we've unlocked IT Cluster. That's kind of a, a subsection of Office Space, but we're going to talk about that in just a second. We've unlocked a ton of different policies, and again, some of these may depend on what DLCs you have, so we'll try and be careful about which ones we dive into. But the biggest and most important step for growing your town is right here. High density residential, high density commercial, and office zones. So let's talk about each one of those just very briefly. We've got a decent amount of money in the bank. And uh, let's see, where do we start? So if we just dive into the zoning for a minute and we look at you know our residential zones, they're, they're smaller houses. And we can see that you know this is level two. Um, as the buildings level up, they'll house more and more people. They'll produce more tax revenue also. Now, one of the ways you can level buildings up is just making sure that you have good service coverage everywhere. So once in a while, come through and check, you know, what, what's my healthcare coverage like? What is my education coverage like? Ooh, pretty bad. So we've got this little bit of a, a buffer spot, right? May as well drop in an elementary there. Do we not have... <laughs> Man, I was slacking on that, huh? So that will help a little bit. <laughs> Let's get at least one high school in here. Did I not have one for this half of the town? That's crazy. We'll throw in here at the main intersection. Standard high school building. Get uh, everybody educated, and that's a, a very important thing. We need education for one of the things that we're about to do, which is office zoning. Uh, one of the things that we're gonna wanna look at is potentially university. So for now, we're not gonna talk campus. We're just gonna drop in the university building. This works just like all the other schools, so. Once you've gone through elementary, once you've gone through high school, that's usually when the Sims will make a choice and they'll either go to the workforce, which is great for default industry, or they'll continue on to university, which is better for office and uh, higher educated jobs in various spots. So if you take a look, let's look at industry for a minute. Default industry building, no, nothing special about it. We're still only level one over here, it looks like. Building needs to be covered by more services to allow it to be upgraded. It, it tells you that. And it's a little easier to tell on the PC kind of what your service coverage is, but we can take a look through the info views and find all that out. But you can see every business has a number of worker slots for uneducated, educated, well-educated, and highly educated. And default industry has more spaces for lower educated individuals. I think we've unlocked it if we go into policies. There is a Industries 4.0. Is it at the bottom of city planning? So with this turned on, all industrial workspaces are for well and highly educated citizens. It increases the production output by 50%, but it reduces the number of workplaces by 30%. So if you have a real heavy push for education in your city, you can still have industry jobs, but you may want to have the industry 4.0 turned on. If we were to turn that on right now, though, it would be very detrimental to those businesses because they'd be looking for well and high educated individuals. And we only just dropped in a university, so they're not well and high educated yet, but they will be as long as we keep that coverage good and in the green. Let's let it play for a second. If we go down to education, we can look at elementary, which is a little light over here. I might put another one somewhere over here in the middle. Let's do that now while we've got the money in the bank. Something like that. But we've got good coverage, I think, for high school. We're in the green. Uh, elementary, a little dry here or there. We could do another street through there. That looks like that's part of our problem. They'll figure it out. And same thing with university. So has a coverage area, maximum capacity, 4,500. So we're pretty good there. Um, we have a lot less eligible. Hopefully the, they will make their way down here. But let's go in and talk about what we really need to today, which is the higher density options. So your traditional houses have less people per building. The high density provide things like apartments and higher density means more people and it attracts more young adults into the cities. Commercial, sort of the same thing. You're just going to get bigger buildings, more dense, more stores packed into the same space. And offices provide uh, another avenue to meet industrial demand. So when you see that yellow bar going up, you could either meet it with industrial space or with office space. 
but it's a place again for educated citizens so uh, make sure it even warns you make sure you have a university before you start stamping down lots of that so let's get a look at this in contrast so you know we have all these small houses in the back neighborhood let's just do default high density residential here and let's see what happens as that starts to move in now these will be lower level buildings they get taller um, as they level up we see you start to get these you know tenements and apartments and things like that uh, let's come over here and double check our zoning so we had this tiny little square that we had stamped the tourism focus on so even though we had low density still get these really big hotels that crop up there um, over here on foggy heights did we do anything special or did we just define a different district i think we just defined a different district so let's just bring this out a little bit and we'll go back into our zoning and here we've got low density commercial um, i'm gonna break this side of the block Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dezone that as low and then rezone it as high density so you can kind of see across the street what that difference looks like. And why don't we just fix that one guy right there? So this will cause uh, these businesses to move out because they're not properly zoned for that space. But since we have so much commercial demand right now, that should be totally fine. It'll build right back up. One of the biggest things to consider the balance between industry and office is really the education of your city. So if we go back into info views, can hold wire triangle, go down to the, uh, the what the four o'clock position, um, or when you hold wire triangle, you can also tap down on the D-pad. There's those little shortcuts there, but we can see a breakdown of again where you know people are educated. Are they elementary educated? Yes, for the most part. A little light over here, but we just move those people in. High school, again, same thing. We just moved these people in, so we'll keep an eye on that. And university, no one's university educated because we just moved the university in. But you can get a breakdown of the education status, that pie graph, and you can see we're mostly uneducated and educated. And then we have some well, and we're starting to get some highly educated. Now, if we were to drop in a bunch of office space on our map right now to meet that industrial demand, they are going to suffer from not enough worker uh, problem, for sure. And, and we can prove a point by <laughs> coming in here and uh, letting some of those businesses move in. Now, the one really nice thing about offices is you can put these smack on top of residents. They don't care. I mean, they not that they don't care, but it doesn't bother them. And I'll show you why. If you look at your noise pollution, offices don't make a lot of noise. And residents don't either unless there's a really busy intersection in their neighborhood, which, you know, that's not too bad. If you look at commercial, you can kind of tell where commercial is for sure, um, because that's really noisy down this main strip. And then things like tourism and leisure are noisier uh, and high density is noisier than low density. So you can see low density on the left side of the screen, high density on the right. And definitely that that red bubble gets darker and spreads out more on the high density side of the street. So you got to be kind of careful where you're putting um, some of these zones, especially when you get to the higher density stuff, because that noise bubble is really big and really offensive. Um, there's some things you can do to negate it. One, just space things out a little better. That probably seems obvious, but you know, don't don't connect, don't put things right on top of one another if you don't have to. But the other little things you can do are use things like your tree brushes. So if we come in here. Let's just go with um, let's just go with a bunch of palms. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause it. I want to show you the I want to show you this again. So let's look at that noise bubble. Right, pretty pretty drastic. If we were gonna put houses back here, uh, you know, it might that noise might spill over. Now if we want to pad that out a little bit, let's build a street back here like that let's do 12 let's let's save room for a footpath so we'll do that and let's imagine we were going to move somebody in somewhere in that neighborhood it's pretty rough right now even even if you're on this side of the street the south side of the street there so let's jump into our tree brush spam as many trees as we can here and palms aren't necessarily the best looking because they create that little dirt bubble 
but they fit our map theme. So we'll get some more in here. I'm going to shrink the size down and just going to spam the heck out of it. You could do yours a little, take a little bit more time and you won't get these rows. But I just want to prove a point is that the trees can be a really nice buffer for some of the noise that, that spills over from some of those commercial zones. So you get that awful texture pop in, unfortunately. But let's pretend that's not there. And then let's go in and look at the noise bubble now. And let's hit play on three times speed. And you'll notice that it, the color does get a little bit lighter. It recedes just ever so slightly. Um, so things like trees, just having a little bit of space, having something like, you know, a block of office before you get to your residence can drop that noise down a lot. Again, office doesn't make noise. So it's not like the heavier commercial areas. We got a fire up here. Um, speaking of noise, industrial is terrible. It's the worst. It's the worst polluting. It's the worst for the noise. It's all the truck traffic. Um, and traffic is a big thing that creates noise. Uh, we can do a little bit to help out with that. I think now, right? Do we have... We do. We have uh, highways with sound barriers. So again, let's take a look at this in noise view here. Right? If we, even just to make a little bit of a change, upgrade these to noise barrier segments. That should help our noise situation a little bit. And you'll watch as I play. It actually makes a, a considerable difference. So use those noise barriers when you can, um, especially if you're kind of in a central area like this, you can prevent that spillover of that noise from bothering the residents too much. Now, you don't have that for everything. Uh, wait, one way. What is this? Two lane highway. One way highway with sound barriers. I could do that for the exits to help, but it's not, you know, it's not that that big of a deal. Actually slowed things down a little bit, changing the road types. Hopefully that will catch back up. But this is one of our next projects. So if you're following along at home, one of the things that we need to keep in mind is this is what's going to break first in this structure. We are adding a ton of a ton of people by having, you know, all these options, all these businesses, lots of residents in a smaller space now. So your traffic management needs to be that much more thought out. Um, you know, we're going to start to see some intersections backing up. We're going to want to double check where we have traffic lights and where we shouldn't. Right now, it's not too bad, but we could we could keep things flowing. We don't want this to start backing up to the roundabout and then causing that to slow down. So back in the inspector tool, we can go into intersections. And again, let's stop the traffic on the side streets. Let's let the traffic coming through just go and do its thing. And if things get a little backed up into the residential areas, that's totally fine. That's, that's not going to impact anything in a negative way. Now, where we have two major avenues connecting, I'm okay leaving a traffic light there. That's fine. And if you want to come in and kind of clean up and just make things a little bit more logical, I think, again, it makes sense. Let the, let the longer road, let that traffic have the right of way. Stop the traffic on the side streets, you know, and, and, and turn it in that way. But that really isn't going to impact any traffic. If we look at traffic, kind of see where our problems are. 86% not bad, but guess guess where the problems are? All in the industrial zone. Now, one of the ways we can solve a lot of the traffic challenge of our city is to have this industrial zone completely cut off from the rest of this. So what we could do, we have another area we could buy. We could buy this one up here. Let's do that. And that gives us all this space over here on the highway where now we can come in and create another exit for over here and we can totally sever this so that all the traffic coming in and out of this part of the city, at least, which is a lot, it's going to be re reduced that much more though by not having all this truck traffic on there. So how do we kind of do this and keep the, the same structure, you know, without having to change too much around? Well, I think we can kind of feed everything down into here, change some of the one ways around just a little bit. And where we exit from, I'm not sure. Maybe we come in the bottom of the zone and exit from the top and create some little loop. But let's get something in here for now. So 
this is going to be a huge help again for reducing the traffic that's over there. So let let's get a look before we uh, before we move. Eighty seven percent, and a lot of our traffic problems are in the industrial zone and on this roundabout, which is again all traffic for that industrial zone. Or not not all, but man, it's a lot of it. So if we come into the freeform tool and we go into snapping options, I'm going to do the, all the way down on the elevation step, and that makes a huge difference for you know creating smaller, smoother slopes that look much more natural. So um, we'll bring everything into here. Yeah, that should work. So let's imagine that we're funneling all of our traffic into there, into that spot. That's where it's coming into the zone. And then maybe up here, let's connect these end streets just for a minute. We're just going to do a, a little bit of a facelift here to our industrial area. I'm going to connect all these streets on the end. Uh, and then we'll rethink kind of kind of our one-way uh, roads that cut a little through there. But let's get this hooked up first. So back over to the highway tabs. And I want to do two things. I want to get traffic. Let's get traffic off the highway first. So how do we get traffic off? Well, uh, back over to our freeform tool. And we'll bring it kind of like that. Something like so. If you ever don't like these bends, just delete one segment on either side. You can usually make a, a smoother version of it. So that's the traffic coming from this side of the highway wanting to get off into the industrial zone. Now we can just do the same thing over here. We're going to come up and over and connect it into this. So let's see. Again, I'm on that, that one elevation step click. So I'm going to come up one for a relatively smooth slope. I'm going to come up another. Come out, I don't know, about 10 units before I come up again and try and get over. And if you do it just right, sometimes it'll work. Sometimes we need to bump it up twice. So let's do that. So we can do something like this, right? Just, just to get it hooked back in. It doesn't have to be the fanciest thing in the world. What you're looking for is kind of smooth flow, right? So I don't want this to be too sharp of a, a corner where the, the traffic has to really slow down. And I don't want them too close either. I want space between merges. So uh, this gives them a little bit of time to accelerate. And then here where it becomes one lane meeting another lane, if you've got mass transit, you can do something like this and upgrade it. And that could help the merge go a little bit smoother. You could do a three lane highway if you don't have mass transit. Down here at the end, it creates that split where I can go right or I can go straight. And I think we'll need to rethink um, our one ways down here. Now, just to really commit to this, let's delete that. Let's get this backside connected. Like that. Now, what we could do here is if we want to get a little crazy, we could kind of exit everything out from this corner. Uh, freeform, come back around underneath. And then do the same thing on the way out. So we can kind of curve along the highway before we hook back in. Mm. And then we can split this off and do the same thing we did before. So we'll come up one, two, three clicks, and that should allow us to clear over. We just have to watch out for our pillar placement. Really? All right. Now for here, and this may look a little sloppy, uh, but we want to come around. So you can certainly condense this. You could, 
You can do lots of different things. This, this is a really big free flowy T intersection. But the principle here is I'm getting traffic off the highway before I'm introducing any more traffic onto the highway. So we want to do the same thing on the other side. Uh, never mind. I did the same thing on the other side. So we can, from this side of the highway, go straight or exit to the right. And from the other side, we can go straight or exit to the right. Coming back from the zone, we can go that way or we can go that way. So that has this all hooked up. Now, what we should do, because we've disconnected the ability for some people to, to go from over here to over there for work, um, people will, will happily walk. So let's give them a pedestrian path that cuts through here. So now at least they've got a way if they are pedestrians to come over into this zone because we've completely severed that. The only way to get there now is to go out on the highway and, and come back into the zone. Let's break out our roads and we'll go into one ways and let's see if we can do some, some changes over here. So we don't want this last segment to be one way, but we do kind of want when they're coming off of the highway to either go right or left, you know, start, start directing traffic where we want it to go. So let's upgrade this and whatever direction we originally drew it is the direction the one way will be in. So we'll probably have to change it because I was driving or drawing rather away from the, uh, the circle. So that gets traffic into the zone. Now, how are we getting traffic out of the zone? We want everybody to funnel over here and we want them to do kind of one of two things when they get here, we want them to leave the zone or, or they might also need to re-enter it. So that is something to think about for those trucks that are maybe, you know, coming in to deliver something from here to pick it up and drop it off to somebody else that needs it over there. Uh, we want to provide another route. And this is just kind of sloppy, but just things to consider. That way, if I'm in the industrial zone, I can come here and get back into the industrial zone. One of the things to be very careful if you cut off an area of your town is, you know, what kind of coverage do you have for things like medical, just in case any people get sick over here, we'll throw that in, in case any people die. Uh, wow, we don't have good coverage for cemeteries, do we? <laughs> let's, uh, let's get some of that going. Throw one there. And then just to double check on police and fire. See, police is totally cut off from over here now. So let's move them into the zone. And I think fire is still over here. It is. But man, is it, it's dark up there. <laughs> that is a lot of red. That is a lot of places that could burn pretty bad. So keep in mind that uh, we were at 87%. Let's see what this does to the traffic, or at least does it move it away from where the problem spot is right now. We want to see this lighten up considerably because if it does, that means that all that zoning that we created down here, all the high density stuff, all the people that were moving in, we might be able to support it. If we're still trying to support all that truck traffic at the same time, uh, that could be a little tricky. So it looks like a lot of it is offloading out into this area and you can even see what's happening under the tunnels. So it's, you know, this is not the smoothest thing over here. I'll do a, a complete industrial build at some point in the future. I've got some I think pretty cool builds in uh, in some of my towns in the Let's Plays, but this is just kind of a quick down and dirty to get you started. Again, it's just something to consider. It wasn't really what I uh, had hoped to cover in today's episode, but it is an important thing because as we move in all these people down here, we've got to make other considerations for, you know, <laughs> can we support all the same traffic we could before? Probably not. Um, anytime we do those pedestrian paths, it gets people walking. That is a fantastic thing. This also might be their only way to work right now because they don't feel like driving all the way down here on the highway, but we'll keep an eye on this. We can always tinker with this and, and straighten it out, but this is a very basic principle of effective interchanges. Ignore the traffic backing up in the background that you want to get the traffic off the highway before you introduce traffic coming onto it. And that is a major, major drawback of the cloverleaf that's built into the game. Um, you're 
introducing traffic and then having people get off <laughs> immediately after. It's it's really sloppy. Uh, it's some of the most intense driving in New England. If you're doing like, uh, I don't know, 95 and 128 or 93 and 128 and uh, 495 and uh, 93, they're, they're very fun cold reliefs. And by fun, I mean you better not blink. And don't use a turn signal because that just shows weakness. Now, one other thing to mention, we did talk about the tourism specialization before, and now we can do the same thing with leisure. Leisure is a commercial specialization. So if we go over here onto this tab, we can stamp that down on an already defined district. But the thing to keep in mind with this one is that it's 24 seven. So just like with tourism, it causes noise pollution, but this is nightclubs and hot spots, And th this is where the noise gets to be some of the worst. So you better have kind of something that's tucked away off in the distance, not too close to where people live, unless you're trying to get those people to move out, but then by all means, move them in right next door. Now, as our city starts to expand, there's a ton of other stuff that we've unlocked, but a lot of this is DLC based. So we'll cover all that in future episodes. Um, one thing that I think makes the most sense in the next episode uh, is to solve little things like our power problems. Let's do that while we outro. Um, but we want to start providing more mass transport options. And one of the ones that we unlocked, I'm going to keep going with coal for now. One of the ones that we just unlocked is, okay, we solved our power problem there. Um, in the next episode, we're going to talk about by far one of my favorite methods of transportation, and that is the metro. We've unlocked the underground metro station. If you have Sunset Harbor, you also have the above ground metro station and elevated metro station. So below, on, above. And the train tracks, or the metro tracks, I should say, work um, just the same for, for all three of those stations. So we'll get some metro connected along our main drag here. And then we'll find some ways to hook in some other parts of our city and make kind of a, a hub station, get some people moving around. But Metro's really essential and it's really important. And it's even more useful if you can use it in combination with some of the other routes, you know, to start moving people around via bus. And we'll get some more routes set up over here to try and get that a little busier. But, you know, we'll move people around on bus to get them to Metro, to get them to faraway spots or over to industrial areas that they work in, but can't drive to anymore because the mayor decided to do something like this. But hey, did it work? That's the question. Traffic flow 93%, I think it did. So, you know, you, you move problems around. You don't necessarily solve them. You know, we've still got slow traffic. We've still got intersections that could be a lot better. This is not ideal right here, but we'll fix it. We'll make it better. And what we've done in the meantime is clear this path to move a ton more people in and to keep this area flowing. And sometimes that's the most important thing, you know, just give, Give the care to the areas that need it most. And before any of you have any dirty thoughts about my turn of phrase, I'm going to say thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, likes, comments, and shares all help the channel a lot and are greatly appreciated. If you're new here, subscribe for more. Consider hitting the bell to get updates for this and other series. Join the Discord if you want to get involved in the discussion. And if you'd like to support the channel, there's links to that and all those other things in the description down below. Really hope you enjoyed. Hope you're learning a lot. Tune in next time when we'll talk about Metro and hooking in some of the other things. Until then, though, this is Move the Mouse, signing off.